Some lawmen were more interested in breaking the law than upholding it. Here's five rowdy lawmen from the Old West. In addition to his unruly locks, Timothy Longhaired Jim Courtright was known for his skill as a gunman, performing at one time as part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Always a controversial character, he was the first elected marshal of Fort Worth, Texas. He also ran protection rackets in the local saloons and gambling houses. His enthusiasm for his work often ran away with him. At one point, he was employed to track down cattle rustlers, but he ended up killing both rustlers and homesteaders. Courtright finally met his end in 1887 in a duel with Luke Short, a saloon owner and former friend of Courtright's. Short had told Courtright to go to hell when the former had offered the latter protection. In the middle of the street, the two men met in one of the very few face-to-face -face gunfights that have actually taken place in the Wild West. After a tense standoff, both men drew their pistols at the same time. Short fired first, blowing off Courtright's thumb. Courtright tried to shift his gun to his uninjured hand, but as he did so, Short shot him in the chest, fatally wounding him. Frank Canton was jailed in 1877 under his birth name of Josiah Horner for robbing a bank in Comanche, Texas, but soon escaped and signed on as a cattle herder, working his way to Nebraska. Deciding on a new start, he changed his name to Frank M. Canton and settled into a job protecting cattle stock for a large consortium of Wyoming cattlemen with questionable ethics. In 1882, he was elected sheriff of Johnson County, Wyoming, and during the Johnson County War, Canton signed on as one of Frank Walcott's regulators. In April 1892, he led the regulators to the KC Ranch, where Nate Champion and Nick Ray, small-time ranchers who had been falsely accused of cattle wrestling, were holed up. Champion had been a friend of Canton's, but this did not prevent Canton from setting the house on fire after a gun battle that had lasted most of the day. As the house burned around him, Champion burst out of the house and was shot 28 times. Canton left town shortly after and traveled to Oklahoma, where he became a deputy U.S. Marshal. He killed the fugitive Bill Dunn in 1896, and a year later, in 1897, he left for Alaska due to a gold rush, returning to Oklahoma the next year and continuing to work in law enforcement. Henry Newton Brown was a classic example of a poacher turned gamekeeper. He had once ridden with Billy the Kid, and they ambushed and murdered a sheriff in New Mexico in 1878. After making a hasty retreat, Brown disappeared for a while before reappearing in Texas, where he worked as a deputy sheriff for a short time. He became a ranch hand and ended up in Kansas, where he again took up law enforcement. In order to make ends meet, Brown began to track outlaws for their bounty but occasionally he got sidetracked. In April 1884, at the Medicine Lodge Bank, Brown and three accomplices burst in just after opening time and robbed it, shooting several bank employees in the process. They made their getaway, but were soon surrounded. The locals were shocked when they discovered the identity of the thief, and there were many calls to hang Brown. He was due to hang in the morning, but the mob could not wait. They broke into the jail, overpowered the guards, and opened the cell. Brown, as was his nature, made a desperate attempt to escape, but he was shot dead.
John Barclay Armstrong moved to Austin, Texas in 1871. He joined the Texas Rangers in 1875 and took part in the Las Cuevas War. Armstrong was a member of Captain Leander McNelly's Special Forces, which, like all Special Forces, operated on a shoot-now, ask-questions-later policy. Among his many exploits was his capture of John Wesley Hardin. Hardin, a notorious outlaw, said to have once killed a man for snoring too loudly, was wanted for the murder of Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb. At the time, Armstrong was recovering from a gunshot wound and needed to walk with the aid of a cane, but he still volunteered to help track Hardin down. After receiving information to Hardin's whereabouts, Armstrong and his men went in pursuit. They tracked him onto a train in Florida, and as the train pulled into a station, Armstrong entered the coach. Seeing only a man with a cane, Hardin did not reach for the gun hanging from the luggage rack above his head, which was a mistake. Armstrong suddenly switched his cane to his left hand and drew his gun, confronting not only Hardin but also four members of his gang. One of the gang members opened fire, and Armstrong killed him instantly before hitting Hardin over the head and knocking him unconscious. John Hicks Adams was a bona fide 49er. In 1849, he left his home in Illinois for California as soon as news of the gold rush reached him, and he remained there for two years until moving to Santa Clara County with his family to settle on a farm. He was elected sheriff in 1863 and was involved in the pursuit and capture of Tiburcio Vasquez, a notorious bandit and horse thief. His interest in gold never waned, and he is credited with making the first exploration of Lake Tahoe. In 1878, Adams was killed in Arizona while prospecting for gold. The suspects escaped to Mexico and were never tried for his murder. However, they were all later killed by an unidentified posse. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the new video. Hit that like button and let me know what you thought down in the comments. Have a great day.